Today, we're gonna to talk about NVIDIA's RTX 3080 Ti. Now, there's been so many rumors and speculation on this GPU, and we have some pretty major news that may mean you're gonna have a better chance at actually getting one. Let's get started. <music> So today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're a creative person, somebody who's curious, a lifelong learner, Skillshare is a great way in one place to get different classes in order to just grow as a person, as a creative. If you guys watch me here on YouTube, I do all sorts of tutorials, builds, and likewise on Skillshare, definitely a great place where I've learned how to hone my skills from product photography. Every time I put up a really cool looking computer to product videos, there's a lot of great creators on Skillshare. For example, I've taken the class by YC Imaging and they give you a lot of great filmmaking principles, things that I've applied to this very YouTube channel and Skillshare is a fantastic way to go about doing this. You'll get unlimited access to thousands of classes and you get great feedback from the community and even better news, it's actually really affordable, usually coming in at under $10 a month for a premium membership. And the first 1,000 people to go to my link below will get a free trial of their premium membership. That way you can explore. They have so many different categories. And let me know what you guys think down below. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to smash that like button. They say every time you smash that like button, a 3080 Ti becomes one step closer to falling in your hands. All right, so let's talk about the 3080 Ti. It's no secret that all of the GPUs historically with the Ti moniker have been pretty much the one to go to for enthusiasts. As we know, the 1080 Ti, even the 980 Ti, continue to this day to be actually pretty potent GPUs for certain games something that came out that long ago is still fairly relevant today especially the 1080 ti and the 1080 ti is also the reason why the 2080 ti possibly didn't sell as well as it should even though once again the 2080 ti represents pretty much the pinnacle of sort of the regular consumer gaming gpus of course before you get to the ultra crazy titan cards and this generation it's going to be pretty much the same idea we do have the rtx 3090 which does throw a little bit of a wrench into that sort of historical difference between a 2080 Ti and something like a Titan GPU. But now we're going to have the 3080 and the 3090 and in between the 3080 Ti. And I still think it's going to be one of the most popular high-end GPUs when it's finally released. Of course, every GPU released has been popular as we see with the stock issues. But let's talk about a few specific 3080 Ti issues that I think are going to be monumentally important. So now the first point. You would think that in talking about a GPU, you, the first thing we would be concerned about is the performance and normally you'd be right but in the current situation that we find ourselves with GPUs being virtually non-existent the performance of the 3080 Ti really is something in the back of your mind first you're going to be concerned with availability as we talk right now in the beginning of March it's the absolute worst season I've ever seen if you're looking to purchase a GPU we're talking about all major retailers absolutely sold out with very rare and sporadic drops happening even when the rtx 3000 first came out at the end of last year you'd be able to eventually catch a drop at micro center best buy newegg but it seems like even those sources now it becomes very very difficult to actually be able to get one of these gpus nvidia even admitted as such they were even thrown off guard by the amount of demand and now there's a huge chip shortage pretty much across the board even car manufacturers are actually having a lot of trouble getting chips we're talking about everything from cars to refrigerators everything that actually has silicon in it is having a huge amount of issues of course we also have the consoles that have also been very difficult to get and very sold out and of course the gpus are going to be one of the most widely affected products not to mention the huge demand from cryptocurrency mining as we pretty much have been having a bigger boom than we even had in like 2017 so that pretty much has driven a lot of people to buy these gpus but there will be some good news with a potential availability there may be a silver lining at least in terms of hardware availability it seems like a little bit later in the year perhaps in the summer i think it may be in july there's something that's going to be the 1559 basically that's going to be a change in the way that ethereum is i would suggest you look this up and read up for a little bit more detailed information but basically we as gamers what we have to know is that ethereum is going to perhaps be less profitable to mine that means that less gpu hardware is going to be 
interesting to these miners. So there's a chance if this happens and it indeed reduces the profitability of Ethereum mining, we may see more GPUs on the market just because some people are going to be more hesitant to really invest in more hardware if they're not going to be making as much of a return on their investment. That's something that could certainly affect the availability a little bit because as it stands now, like I said before, it's the absolute worst season for any type of GPU release. And that's where we're going to come specifically to the 3080 Ti. One huge important piece of news that may be occurring with this that also happened with the 3060, Nvidia may put in some limitation on sort of the hash rate and the power of the 3080 Ti. So that way it's a lot less powerful for cryptocurrency mining. And the idea here is that then the miners sort of would not really want to get it because it's going to be expensive for the amount of return and investment you're getting back. Thus, it would be more available for gamers. But certainly we have seen many issues with this with the 3060. That was the first GPU that this was implemented with. That GPU is pretty much sold out as well. If you look today, you're not going to be able to find one most likely. So I'm not too sure how useful this sort of limitation is going to be. And as we've seen, a lot of people are using this GPU to mine other coins. It seems like the limitation was basically just on Ethereum. So it didn't really affect much. So while it may seem like a great headline grabbing sort of something for Nvidia to say that the GPU is going to be half as powerful for mining, therefore they're focusing on gamers. In the real world, I really don't think that's going to be nearly as applicable just because there are many different things that miners can do with these GPUs, try different systems, different coins. So I'm not really convinced that's really going to solve that issue. And next, let's talk about another important point, and that's going to be pricing. The 3080 Ti is going to be crazy expensive. Now, when the RTX series first launched with a $699 MSRP 3080 all the way back last year, I know that seems like a very long time, but at that time, a $700 3080 was pretty feasible. NVIDIA was selling their Founders Edition. It was hard to get, but people did get them. The 3090 came in at $1,500. People really didn't like the 3090. It seemed like a bad value compared to the 3080. At over twice the price, it really offered just a little bit more performance, maybe 15 to 20 percent. And then when the chatter started about the 3080 Ti, people thought, all right, makes a lot of sense for it to be maybe $999. And performance-wise, it's going to be right in between the 3080 and the 3090. But then, after the new year, when the exemption on tariffs happened, pricing hell kind of broke loose and everything is an absolute disaster now. Pretty much a 3080, in a lot of cases, the third party AIB models, a lot of them are 900 to even over $1,000. So pretty much what we thought the 3080 Ti would be. And the 3090s, most of them, especially the third party AIBs like Asus, um, MSI, all of those, most of them are either at or over $2,000. So now a 3080 Ti no way it would ever come in around the thousand dollars we're talking about something that most likely is going to be pretty close if not right at the price that the 3090 was so that's not really the best value proposition here if you compare it to last year if we thought the 3090 which is going to be faster than a 3080 ti have more vram if you thought that that was expensive at 1500 imagine a 3080 ti which is actually slower and now it's going to be sold for around the same price but unfortunately that's the situation that we find ourselves in. Once again, that's going to be due to the exemption on tariffs, as well as the extreme demand that we're looking at from not only gamers, but also miners. Sort of just massive demands, and the prices have gone up across the board. So if you can find a 3080 Ti when it comes out, you're going to be paying a large amount of money for it. But unfortunately, I think that's the situation we're going to be in, at least for this year. So now let's touch a little bit on the performance of the 3080 Ti with what we know. That way we can see, is the GPU even going to be worth it at sort of its really low availability as well as these really hard to swallow prices. Well, first of all, the 3080 Ti should be more or less sort of a stripped down 3090, which is good because the 3090 really is one of the highest end silicon graphics cards that you can get now. The biggest difference I think is going to be in the VRAM. Now, with original rumors from last year, people thought that it would be a 20 gigabyte version, but it seems like from some recent rumors, looks like maybe we may get closer to something like 12 
gigabytes of VRAM. That number, I think, really is up in the air until we have something that's a little bit more concrete from NVIDIA, or at least something that makes more sense. It'll be hard to say at exactly which number it's going to land at. Of course, the biggest news here is that it's going to be, of course, just like the 3080, it's going to be the GDDR6X, which is basically just a faster version of that, which you're going to find in like a 3070. And all of the AMD 6000 series GPUs have the regular version GDDR6. And of course, they're packing 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, I would prefer 12 gigabytes of VRAM if it is the faster X variant. As we've seen, it can make an impact in many games. Even though AMD has some software workarounds, you're still not going to be nearly as fast as the GDDR6X RAM. Of course, the VRAM does run hot. It's going to be one of the disadvantages of having that really fast RAM. As we've seen with many 3080 and 3090 owners having to replace the thermal pads on the back of their GPUs, but overall, it still is just faster, more powerful memory, and it seems to give a pretty nice gain in a lot of gaming, a lot of applications. Now, a quick note about the competition in AMD. Of course, this generation, AMD has put out some fantastic GPUs, even the 68, 6900 XT, which have been running pretty close to, you know, the 3080, even getting close to the 3090. But AMD has had the same problems with product availability as Nvidia has. So unfortunately, they have not been able to really make as big of a dent in the market as they would have if they just had a lot more product available. And of course, the Nvidia GPUs are still preferred because of some of the encoders. You do get ray tracing and DLSS, which the technology is far enough along now that it's actually a pretty big deal in certain games that you're playing. So I consider that basically a nice point for NVIDIA. And not to mention that ironically, some of the AMD GPUs with current pricing are actually more expensive than their NVIDIA counterparts. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about the 3080 Ti. Are you looking forward to it? Remember to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.